Hey guys, Dr. Dex here. Today I wanted to talk to you uh, about something that I don't talk a lot about, but it's something I use and I don't use this every day, but it's called my, I call it my electrical kit. I do a lot of low voltage uh, lighting and wiring and that kind of stuff. Um, I'm not a certified electrician by any means, but I like to have uh, a certain amount of product handy when I'm hooking up low voltage wires. And sometimes I do 110 stuff around my house. So it's always nice to have a well put together electrical kit for those kind of uh, duties. So what I have is I have a, a tackle box that I bought like, I don't know, 15 so years ago. And there's three different inserts in it. So what I did was I took my inserts and I tried to orchestrate them by size. In my red set, I'll call it red because there's there's different types of connectors. Like there's red butt connectors and crimp connectors and bullets and loops and all kinds of other stuff. And if I'm not using the right terminology, that's because I'm a carpenter. I'm not an electrician. Um, I dabble in car audio stuff. I don't by any means call myself a whiz or a pro at any of this, but it's something you have to learn. And by having the right product on hand, regardless of the size of the wire, sometimes you take something apart and you've got your electrical kit and you don't know if it's a blue, red, or a yellow in sizes. You know, it's for different gauges of wire, right? So these red ones are smaller gauge. They're for like very small gauge wire, which actually the number would be higher gauge, like an 18 gauge or a 16 gauge wire, which is very small. It's kind of weird how they do that. How like two gauge is like, this fits a two gauge wire, right? For a battery or something. A 16 or an 18 gauge wire, you're using these little tiny butt connectors. I tried to organize my kit in colorization. Even though some of my bigger crimp connectors are also red, they're a heavier gauge, like a 10 gauge or an eight gauge. They also, I just keep them in the reds because I know where they are. I know what they're labeled as. You know, I have um, spade connectors as well. So now to put together a really nice kit, you could be in upwards be between the tools that I'm gonna show you and all the crimp and butt connectors, you could be a grand into this stuff. So it is an investment, but what I find is when I go out on the job site, I've got everything I need in this one box. I don't have to search around for, uh, for pliers or a crimp connector or strippers or electrical tape, any of that crap, it's all in this box. So I just don't lose it because it's a big money investment. So this is my red kit. I also have some miscellaneous wire ties, wire connectors, um, toggle switches. I have some grommets in here, you know, nine volt battery fuses, just miscellaneous stuff, alligator clips. Never know when you might need an alligator clip when you're doing electrical. So that's my red set. Now my blue set and my yellow set, I use more than my red. Uh, blue is for those medium gauge wires, maybe your 12s, 12 gauge stuff, uh, 16 gauge stuff like that you know like speaker wires are real thin I'm, and I mostly use butt connectors I also have some wire nuts in here and then I also have some grease filled wire nuts because I do a lot of exterior stuff so when I'm linking together low voltage wire and I need to splice or run I use grease filled wire nuts to sometimes make those connections or I use heat shrink butt connectors which I don't have any in the blue right now but I do have some in my yellow kit because in my in my yellow kit, this is usually the 12 gauge and, and lower set. So like uh, 12 gauge wire is usually what I use 12 to for running my low voltage connections. So one thing I don't have in my kit right now is heat shrink. Um, I'm out. But usually I'll use heat shrink butt connectors, which is a, what you do is you crimp connect your, your fitting and then use a heat gun to melt the heat shrink and then you have a watertight connection and usually what I do after that is then I heat shrink heat shrink tubing over the top of that connection so you cannot even see these so that's a, a, a great uh, longevity wise now I know a lot of diehards out there a lot of you diehards I know who you are you're gonna say doctor always solder everything before doing this but I'm not really a soldering kind of guy um, <clears throat> I have some friends that are and they're hardcore and I get it, but it rains a lot here and trying to run a soldering kit in, in inclement weather just sucks. So usually I'm doing the, I take a heat shrink method 
which it, it seems applicable to me. I've had a low voltage lighting system installed for 20 years and nobody's ever called me back to say, hey, your heat shrink connection failed, okay? So these are expensive though, man. You're gonna spend um, $30 for 30 of these or something like that, 20, 30 bucks. So in, in the environments where I don't need it, like if I'm under a waterproof deck, usually I don't do heat shrink uh, butt connectors, I might just use standard butt connectors or if I'm inside of a rail post or something like that That's gonna stay nice and dry. I'll do that. But we use a ton of um, yellow a ton of yellow So we have a lot of it. It's probably my most gone through and least uh, inventory parts, but I have crimp connectors for spade the male and female so if you need to take something apart like if you're doing a home show or something like that you can just um, tie together like so. They're a little tight at first. So there's a nice tight connection. But if you don't crimp this right and probably heat shrink it, when you go to pull this apart, if you're not pulling on the fitting, <laughs> you're gonna pull the wires apart. So you gotta watch out for that sometimes. And then I do have some car audio stuff. Um, black and red is positive and negative. Um, Certain connections in low voltage is important that you do a positive and a negative. And other times, like when you're doing lighting, not so much. Um, I always try to run polarity the same when I'm doing my low voltage stuff. But I've actually, one time I just said, ah, screw it, I'm just gonna do it and see what happens. And I got it all mixed up and it didn't matter. It's low voltage. But, and some guys are like that. Yeah, man, it doesn't matter. It's low voltage. And other people are like, yeah, you know, if you're an enthusiast or you're a true hardcore wire guy, then you might take the time to run all the polarity the same way, which I do, because on your low voltage wires, there's usually indicators by either markings or letters or numbers or stripes on your wire. All right, so that concludes the connector part. So now what I'm gonna go over with you is what's inside the top of the box, all right? Now this is all your crimp connectors. Um, I usually have a couple of these. These are great. I don't think they're really a brand name that I use but I've had a buddy of mine that's in the car audio industry buy me some from the car audio uh, wholesale place. And those worked really well, but I've also bought some Klein. You can't really go long, wrong with Klein hand tools. I think they make some of the best overall used hand tools. I mean, I love Snap-on, don't get me wrong, but we don't want to make a $5,000 electrical kit. We're just trying to get by. So uh, Klein, you can get those at Home Depot, I think. Really good quality tools. And then I always get a wire stripper, and this one does multiple gauges. And once you kind of figure out which gauge you need, it, it, it cinches down on the wire, and then it cuts it, and then it pulls it apart, so it strips it for you. It's like an auto stripper. So uh, that's kind of nice. Here's another style of an auto stripping, a vice grip one. I don't really use that one as much. Then I have some zip ties, which always come in handy. That, and a, head, a headlight, uh, especially this time of year. Yeah, those come in handy. Get yourself one of those. Another set of crimpers. Another set of crimpers. These are, I think, Channel Lock brand, and these work really good too. So either Klein or Channel Lock makes some pretty good crimping and cutting tools as well. Uh, what else is in here? Oh, gotta have a screwdriver. You know, I just leave a dedicated screwdriver in my kit. A couple rolls of high quality electrical tape. I like this uh, Scotch Super 88. It works in low temperatures. It works on high temperatures. Um, it's a little more expensive, but you know, longevity, I care about it. Then I also have a kit of multiple colors of electrical tape in case I'm doing something complex where I might need to identify different connections. It, as you can see, I've had this for a while. It's not used very much. It looks like one color I did use all of, probably black. And then I also have another stripper right here. This one's missing a screw out of it, but it still works. So I like having extras on site in case either two of us are running wire or I just need an extra one. And then I just have a couple of ghetto strippers in case this one flips around. It's a clipper on one side and a stripper on the other side. Again, probably a blade, a knife is always good to have. Needle nose pliers, another stripper, but this one's for cable. So coax and cable. So that one doesn't get used too often. And then I have a couple of um, outlet testers, which come in handy. Not a whole lot else in here right now, 
just a bunch of miscellaneous parts and things like that that you accumulate when you're doing this kind of work. Oh, and then I do have some solder in here for when I am soldering things and a couple of drill bits and things like that. Sharpie, that's about it. A couple drill bits. So that is what is in my electrical toolkit. So when I'm on wire day or if I'm hooking up lights or I need to run something in particular, maybe I'm working on a, an outlet on a house, I grab this kit and I take it with me to the job site and 90% of the time it has everything I need to complete those tasks. I hope that helped you guys. I hope it helps somebody out there. Any questions or comments, leave them below. And um, don't forget to like our videos and hit that subscribe button, all right? Thanks for watching guys. Have a great day.